one of the things that has changed in parkour in the United States, at least. We, I want to keep coming back to us being in different countries because <laughs> I think that's important. Yeah. One of the things that's changed a lot is the demographic. So when parkour first launched in the United States and was finding its footing and when the gyms first started, and I started one of the first parkour gyms in, in the United States, it was a lot of high school kids, maybe late middle school. I think that was really the focus of the demographic. And at least in my classes, we even had college students. So we had college students, some adults, a lot of high school students, and a few middle school students. Yeah. Nowadays, if you go to a parkour gym in the United States, it's mostly children. And I and by children, I mean under 18. But in the parkour gym sense, I mean you have a, maybe a, the majority are not even in uh, in high school yet so under 14. okay and so it's a it's a different demographic which brings a different energy a different intentionality a different vision a different focus a different desire and that can't be ignored i think in terms of in terms of the energy but you, you don't see that on instagram right you don't have a bunch of eight-year-olds posting videos there's a couple of them you know you have people like you know you have the pros posting videos and so what I'm saying is that there's probably a lot of cultures. There's probably a lot of subcultures and we haven't done a good job at parkour.com or in other groups of probably exploring and understanding all those subcultures because the gym that's has a hundred students and they're all between eight and 12 years old, is going to be one culture. And then the guys like you that train themselves and, and, you know, have a tough training session alone and then go out on a jam with friends and push yourselves. Maybe you have a different culture, America versus Russia versus France versus yeah, uh, England. Yes, yeah, so, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know what you mean. I mean, most of the people that I've come across training, it's going to be sort of like. I feel like there's 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 like a gap between these sort of uh, I would say twenty five to late twenties. Like if, of a few years where there's there's not that many people of those left, does that does that make sense? You're saying there's there's a lot of people that are under 25 and a lot of people that are 30 and over, but there's a gap maybe where there's not a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, over 30s, I wouldn't say it's it's like a big community, but there is still there is still people there, and and hmm. maybe for others they might they might come across as like um, peers and you know, people to look up to or ask if you need any kind of like advice on anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's, um, yeah, there's definitely, it feels like there's a, every so often it misses a few years and, uh, yeah, yeah don't really see why. <laughs> the lost generation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.